your Captain Wolf 190D. <coughs> Ooh, excuse me. Sorry about that. That just kind of came up. So, anyway, uh, we had a quite a few bouts uh, last turn, or last turn, um, last episode. We had quite a few bouts, actually. Um, and we're, well, I'm finding out anyway, that the old destroyers really aren't as effective anymore as, uh, well, they used to be. And that's kind of the thing with older ships, anyhow. So we spent some time. Um, we started to clean out some of the old ships, uh, old destroyers, built a uh, built a mine layer, a, a ship built specifically for mine laying instead of just, you know, rotating our old cruisers out. Our old light cruisers. So. <coughs> hmm. I believe my wife and I might be trying to come down with something. Anyway, we should have, uh, let me see here, uh, three months left on that, one month left on that. So what we can go ahead and do is uh, to Portsmouth, we're going to go ahead and send the Rhineland and get the last of those ships updated. Um, we've also got this fleet down here, uh, the, this, this task force. Um, we're going to send them back to port real quick to uh, to see about maybe maybe uh, getting them some repairs. They kind of need it. I think they're a little banged up, I mean, especially that destroyer. We'll go ahead and build, well, mm, no. Um, let's go ahead and suspend that and suspend that. And that'll save us some tonnage. <coughs> yeah. Because I think that fleet is 24,000 tons or something along those lines. Yeah, okay. So that frees up enough for that not to be a problem. And it looks like we're invading the Ivory Coast from the Gold Coast. Okay, Empire of Japan offers an alliance agreement, but needs considerable financial aid. Uh, I mean, it's not like I don't have the money. Hmm, what do we want to do here? What do we want to do here? Hmm. Sorry, guys. I'm 
Yeah, sure, why not? All right. Now, the fact that this fleet with the cruisers is not attacking that port is, I don't know, a little disappointing. Problem is, is we might very well lose northern France. So, do we have any ships in there? No. Okay. There again not entirely sure why they're going to Cape Town Westphalen, move them. And then we go to the Nassau's, and we can't refit the Nassau's because, probably because that ship is being repaired. Yeah, he's suffered very, very, very light damage. Um, you know, it'd be nice, uh, anybody, any of the div, uh, <coughs> any of the dev team, for the game watching this um it would be really nice if you could just like hold off on repairs uh though there again i mean that kind of thing eh, maybe i don't know but um well yeah, you know what in retrospect i actually get it um because you want to be sure that the ship is repaired before uh, but i mean if you could like pause repairs i mean seriously if it's like a tenth of a percent of damage and you you know a ship goes back to port if you could like well then again don't send it back to port i don't know it's just kind of a a, a really weird mechanic it's a very very weird mechanic to me those magdevers are 4500 tons um hmm Okay, anyway, um, we, we've, we've got a lot of ships afloat right now, a lot of capital ships. Um, maybe need to do something about it because it seems, I don't know, it's really weird. It seems like um, our, our, we're not able to train as much crew as I would like or at least keep enough uh, stacked up as I would like. Um, I really don't have much in the way of heavy cruisers, do I? I have I have almost no heavy cruisers. I think that we get into the like the, not the modern cruisers, but it's something else. There's some kind of thing that comes up with the heavy cruisers here soon. Um, hull strengthening. We're doing stra hull strapping. Um, <clears throat> yeah, 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 okay. Coming up on 19-inch torpedoes and the triple tubes. That's going to be a very nice upgrade, I think. So, we'll see how it, uh, how it works out. How's it going to work out on our current build? Uh, they're... 62 tons from being at maximum weight so we might actually have to des design a new destroyer we'll see uh, 
coffee good. And then our ship building capacity just completely bottomed out. Eight transports sunk. Two transports and four transports. West Africa and the West Mediterranean. Um, Venezuela signed over with China. And we issue a major uh, offensive from Sierra Leone against French Guinea. Sweden wants to buy the 64. Portugal wants to buy the 56. Uh, West Africa is getting overrun a little bit, isn't it? Yes, it is. Um, I'm wondering if this fleet here, uh, they're bound for Southeast Asia. They are bound for the North Sea. They are bound for Saigon. The Helgoland class. We'll send them down in there. Um, he's got a refit. And uh, yeah, okay. So let's see here. Ah, there we go. Now that he's done repairing the, the, the like 0.05% damage that happened to him in that one battle, somebody scratched his paint. They had to repaint the ship before they could uh, before they could refit it. <laughs> Something, something crazy or, and or silly like that. I, I don't know. And I don't know. What do you, what do you want? Um, So Gibraltar would be a really, it's a really good central location. I'm just going to move more of my destroyers down to Gibraltar. I mean, I've got these two here in Helgoland, and then in Lerwick, I've got two more. So it's not like I don't have some reserves setting around up here. <coughs> so I'll go ahead and move two more to Scapa Flow. Um, move seven and eight over there, right? Okay. Um, They might, I don't know, these, these 11 ones, they might be undergunned by this point. I'm not entirely sure. Um, hmm. Anyway, we got one more turn on the refit for this, uh, for this ship. Um, and actually, yeah, it's 90,000. That's another 5,000, and then it's a 19,000 ton ship. 
uh, that's being refit. Got one more turn on that. Okay. Uh, let's see here. 7%. We got ours, the Japanese, and the Chinese forces joining in against uh, against the French on the Ivory Coast. Wow, look at that. We got, we got boys helping us out everywhere. Um... Even with the influx of troops, 37,000 of them from China. No, we got we to gotta do something about this um, sooner rather than later, I think. It's, uh, it's going to become critical here. Though, if he takes it back, what I can do is I can just... Um, I, I can go ahead and uh, um, put up another invasion. Uh, but for now, I want to try to take uh, I want to try to take Western France, and that's not going to happen until maybe next turn or the turn after. And I think I got another couple of those Magdeburgs coming, don't I? Yes, I do. They're both produced in Hamburg, and I can fit them in with the uh, the MG42 there at some point. Yes. Okay. All right. Till next turn. Is it 16 over? Yes, okay. Jesus, we just appear to be upsetting everybody. Oh, uh, we're winning? No, I don't want to cancel the war right now. I want to, I want to, I want to make them suffer. All right, so uh, we're going to find out actually if um, if our battleships are up to scratch against his new his new battleships. Um, these are actually, I think these are our oldest dreadnought builds. They've been refit. But are they up to scratch? Let's find out. <clears throat> oh, we've got this these heavy cruisers with them too. Man, look at that thing. That thing's like bottoming out really bad. Let's put him on follow. And yes, I would like you to scream, but I want you to scream the heavy cruiser. Okay, let's um, let's go to sail. Okay, we're gonna stick. Actually, let's take a, a course, a few points off the off the starboard side there. These guys are still only pushing 20 knots. But I'm pretty sure that's still faster than his battleships.
might catch him with one of those. I don't know. It depends. Oh, man. He's a... Uh, wow. Yeah, we're going to catch him. Oh. our battleships. So let me see here. We've got capped AP shells, which at their current configuration are going to punch. Uh, i got to get close, I think. 10,000. Let's see here. He's got 12 inches on the main belt. His fore and aft belt are for crap, though. Man, why do they keep doing that? Down within three thousand three kilometers. See that little bit of that 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 bit of speed actually helps a lot. Oh, he's gonna catch the doubles. Good, boom boom. an easy catch in one two three wow there we go that's what I'm talking about Jesus his cruiser his cruiser isn't even gonna outrun my battleships Surprised this battleship is still hanging in there. So it's, uh, it's actually impressive. He's only taken four four large torpedo hits. Peter 
detonation. Expansion engine. It's just a constant, a constant stream of firepower on this guy. Put the poor battleship out of his misery. Uh, two more torpedo hits. There we go. Okay. So, uh, very, very light damage at best. Um, sank a couple of his battleships. Okay, and now we've got the Helgelands uh, coming up into into a little bit of a, a little bit of a scrap. figure out which way he's headed. We've got the Hansa. And honestly, I think this this cruiser might even be able to just go ahead and um might be able to just send this cruiser right on up in there. Might be able to. Let's find out.
torpedo run there. What are we going to get? We got two of them. It looks like one of them might have exploded early because there's only one other. Nope, nope, it was the cluster. It was that cluster. All right, so the Jean Bart, um, not really looking like it's going to do too well there. Uh, so let's go ahead and get the Hansa here. Surprised! I, I was able to get my uh, my destroyer in there to hit him before his uh, before his torpedoes could even could even retaliate. So let me see here. This guy, I'm gonna send this guy. Let me see here. Screen for the battleships. Okay. Bench gun cracked him. And that's where those those stereoscopic rangefinders really come in handy. Is when you're gonna start uh oh oh ouch. Three grand on the damage there, penetrating hit. And we caught him with three of them. Wow, one of them was a dud. But three of them nonetheless. Let's slow the, the Hansa down. Hmm. Poor little guys, they didn't even stand a chance. My goodness. So yeah, our our V forty fives aren't really any good anymore. Um, but Jesus, the Japanese are taking all kinds of damage from mines. Uh, West Africa is still sort of a hotbed. Um, they want one of the MG forty twos, and I don't know. Do I want to build that for Sweden? Um. Okay. Yes, yes. Get get rid of all of those old ships. Um, the Nassau. Bring him in there. Marseille. Let's put him in. Let's 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 go ahead and blockade Marseille. Okay. The Magdeburgs. Those two Magdeburgs are being commissioned. Uh, that refit is happening, and this ship is uh well hmm. an eight month refit. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so Ting Tao, we can bring him back out. Um
That's another 20,000 tons, so that would be 348,000. I think we've got enough now to start invading. Um, so let's go with a naval invasion on western France. Yes, okay. Uh, and, Jesus. Speaking of those V-45s, And as we're clearing up, actually, um, as we are clearing up, actually, you know what? No, 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 no. Don't, don't worry about that. That they, they can name it. They can name it whatever they want. Eight months, 12 months, 19 months, um, 10 months. All right, so, uh, boy. The next one, actually, the next ship design, this one should be really, really, really simple. Um, it's going to be a very, very, uh, more, much, much more straightforward uh, ship. It is going to be the, uh, the Koenig class. So let's go ahead and let's do a new design. Um, I know we've got plenty of designs now, but the nymphs we can we can go ahead and delete that. We're we're getting rid of those. We're phasing those out. Uh, the scatter gun is still a good base. Um, I think I'm going to keep that around for now. The Helga lines are going to have to be upgraded at some point. Um, the Magdeburg's also a good light cruiser. Um, the Ariadne, not sure what I want to do with them just yet. I might I might offer another refit. Try to. <gasps> Excuse me, try to try to bring them down in cost some more. But anyway, let's go ahead and see if we can't build our Koenig class, right? And I think it should be, it should, it theoretically anyway, it should be built on this, uh, this hull design, all right? So let's go ahead, we're going to put our bulkheads on standard, crew quarters on standard. We're going to, not the Scharnhorst, but the Koenig, and... And because I don't have access to the umlauts, it's just going to be KOE, which is pretty much what an umlaut is. All right, so um, the, let's see here, the beam is going to be 96.9. What was that? Hello? Hmm. Just got a really weird beep. So, anyway, uh, we've got 96.9. As our as our beam, so we need to we need to taper this back a little bit actually. So let's start off with five percent. Ooh, ninety six ten. That's almost right on the money. Look at that. Okay, and the draft. The draft is going to be thirty feet two inches. Thirty foot two inches. So the draft is going to be. Oh my goodness. Okay, so sixteen. Let's try sixteen. Let's try 15, 2, 15, no, um, 14, okay, 14 and a half, not 15 and a half, 
14.1, 14 gets us way too low, I think. Yeah, 14 drops us, so 14.1. That's a really weird, it's a really weird um, uh, uh, number. But anyway, uh, what's the overall weight of the ship? Um, I think the power is uh, water tube boilers, no, propulsion is steam turbines. So it was really the first of the German ships, I think, actually. Um, yeah, I, I think. Anyway, um, let me see here. What do we have for uh, displacement? Displacement full load is 28,600 tons. All right, so we got a 28,600 28, tons, and that's nowhere near long enough, guys. Come on. What are, you, what, are you, what are you trying to pull here? What are you trying to pull here? How am I supposed to fit anything on that? Huh? Length is 654 uh, here, but what's the length here? 575. So... You know, it's it's one of those things where it's like, how do you how do you get it? H how do you how do you get it? So I'm gonna drop the draft back to maybe five percent. That gets us that gets us back a little bit of length. Now we have something that we can work with, all right? But there again, the um. The, the the Kaisers I don't think were thirty three thousand five hundred tons. I don't, I don't think they were. Yeah, the Kaisers were. No, the Kaisers were supposed to be twenty seven thousand tons. Um, so there again, I mean, it's it's, you know, it's it's one of the things that you run into with this. Um, oh, speed. Uh, speed, speed, speed is going to be 21 knots. It's a good thing we built those new heavy cruisers, right? So we've got a 21 knot speed with turbine engines. Okay, so the main tower, and again, I'm not sure where exactly it's supposed to set. Um, and there again, we might have to blow this thing up a little bit, make it larger, just to get that extra bit of length off of it. Not entirely sure. So let's see here. What do we have for uh, for towers? Uh huh. Let me see. Where's the Where's the layout? Okay. There's the layout. Now, what would be really nice? on these and I don't know why you can't do it but why 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 would you not be able to put the rear deck tower uh, down here why can't you do that it's it's kind of it's kind of uh, it's kind of silly actually that you can't mount that tower down there you have to put this tower up here like this it doesn't it doesn't really work out too well especially not with what we're trying to do with this build so that's not that's not gonna work it's not gonna work at all these towers you can put down there. I'm going to put that rear deck tower and I'm going to put a, um, I think, a smaller front tower. I don't know. I don't know what I, I honestly don't know what towers to really use for this. It's um, it's it. This is this is going to be a really uh, this is going to be a really temperamental build too. Actually, come to think of it, um, actually, not really, not terribly. What is that a picture of? That was that was that. Okay. Um. Well, now that's interesting. Let's see here. It might actually appear as though this is supposed to actually be down here. Um, that might be the way that we do this ship, which is fine. 
Um, okay, so we take uh, funnel number one. All right, we put that funnel there. We take funnel number two, and I'm just going to use the hyper funnels because they're the most, uh, they're they're really the more friendly funnels for these kinds of ships. Um, it just, if nothing else, the extra damage control. Uh, yeah, actually, that goes really nice right there. Okay, um, the main guns are going to be 12s. 12 what, though, is the question. Um, and let's go ahead and mount this, this guy right here in the middle where it's going to, where it's going to be. Okay. Um, barbettes. What do I want for barbettes? I'm gonna go with these 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 guys because they they're a little bit more space friendly I think okay but 12 what 12 what L50s so right now we got 46s um, 12 if we go 5% over on the length that's 48 if we go 7% that's gonna be 49 if we go 8% that's going to be 49, so 50s, I think, are going to be maximum maximum length on the bore. There we go. All right, and then this. Hang on just a second. All right, this, I'm going to move this back to here. Okay. That gun can go there, and then what we can do is we can free up some of the bow space. All right, so let's go ahead and get everything mounted. Yeah, that's not going to go there, but can it go there? Yes, it can go there. Okay. And then that can go there. We got our super firing pair forward, and we're going to have our super firing pair aft. Okay. Okay, we got our super firing pair forward and aft, and we still got a retarded offset. Uh, I think it was three inches on that. We're going to call it a 14 inch bar bet, um, and then we're going to have to get into more particulars here. All right, but anyway, so far, so far, she's shaping up very nicely. Stereoscopic rangefinder with an advanced radio. Enhanced reload. We're going to go with Krupp Armor number two. We still got coal fuel with natural boilers, which is just fine. Um, do we want auxiliary diesels? I don't know. But shaft. Yeah, let's go ahead and put auxiliary engines in here. And not electric steering, hydraulic steering. Hydraulic steering is much more reliable. Um, okay. Uh, we're going to go with Barbet 3. Anti-torp number one, double reinforced, anti-flood two, and a updated citadel. All right. Uh, standard ratio AP. Now what we're going to want to examine here is semi-armor piercing. No, let's go to standards. See what we get there. We get 12 and a half inches of penetration at 15,000 meters. If we do that with heavy shells, we're probably going to do very well. Yeah. Actually, we can maybe drop that back to semi-ballistics and then give it uh, ballistite with dunite. And that at 15,000 meters gets us back up to 10-1. That might not be enough. So if we go standard shells with standard AP, um, that's going to be 13-6. That's way too much. So let's go semi-ballistic heavy shells back to that again. We should have a 10-1. Yes. Uh, Electro-hydraulic turrets. What if we did standard with picric acid or dunite with cordite? That's still 13. Now that's craziness. Uh, light shells, however, 11.3. We'll get a nice rate of fire bump. 
bring us right about to one round per minute. Um, and then if we go back to Ballistite, that's going to give us, ouch, 13. Don't need that much pin. Um, yeah, the Cordite, that's fine. Cordite with Dunite. An 11.3. That'll, that'll, that'll be plenty of penetration, I think, for what we're dealing with. Okay, so armoring. Fire control? Yes, they had stereoscopic rangefinders. Uh, armor is going to be, let's see here, 13.8 inches on the armored citadel. So we're just going to round that up and call it 14. 14 on the armored citadel. Um... Ammunition and magazine propulsion, main strike, uh, strike that was 7.9 inches thick. Oh, that's a strike. Uh, the belt thinned to 20 centimeters for a third of the way to the stem. So 20 centimeters is about 8 inches. Uh, so can we do 8 and 8? Yes, we can. All right. Um, the deck was 2.4 inches, so we'll call it two and a half. All right. Um, the forward deck was increased to 10 centimeters. Really? Uh, it's four centimeters over, so it's, wow, that's actually quite a bit. Um, I don't want that much though, so let's call the forward deck two inches, and we'll call the aft deck. We'll we'll armor the aft deck that way. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> uh huh. Okay. There we go. The conning tower. We're gonna go with uh, as much as we can. We'll, we'll we'll put eighteen on the conning tower, and then three inches on the superstructure. Now, the problem, definitely, uh, is going to be secondary batteries. <clears throat> and actually, armoring of the main battery. So, we might have to fiddle with the main armor scheme a little bit. But, let's see here. We've got 14 5.9 inch guns, which I don't think this thing has room for 14 uh, 5.9s. I don't think this hull design has the room for that. So, let's see here. 5.9... Uh, maximum caliber, all right, one, two, three, four, five, six. Actually, it does have, it has just enough. Okay. And we're going to be cutting it really tight. Um, let me see here. Uh, I'm going to put an inch and a half on the top of these things, and we're going to go ahead and say eight inches. That saves us quite a bit of, uh, of weight. Just taking, taking, you know, the, the top armor down saves you a lot. <clears throat> and then for 88s, for 88s, I think we just max this out and we'll be okay. Uh, however, um, actually it says we've only got, uh, well, no, we got 10. 10 88s. There's six, and, and this is really weird, uh, six regular 88s and then four 88 AA guns, all right? Five torpedo tubes, which again, I don't mess with torpedo tubes on my battleships. Typically, I don't. Um, it depends on depends on the build. It depends on what I'm going to do. But for the most part, my main ships, I don't I don't adhere to the uh, the historical standard on the battleships. All right, so let's go ahead and trim trim the top armor on these 88s as well. And then we can start to armor up the, uh, the, the main guns. So let's see here. What was the armor on the main battery? The main battery turrets received 30 centimeters, which is 11.8 inches of armor on their faces, 10 inches on the sides, and 11.4 uh, on the rear to balance. Um, the roofs were sloped. Uh, where they were, and let me see here, from the front, decreasing to 3.1 inches on the flat portion. So um, the, the roof, I'm just going to leave it 3 inches uh, with a 14-inch barbette, and we're going to go ahead and say uh, 12 inches at least. Can we get away with 13? Can we go for 13? Don't know. 
I mean, if I shorten the range a little bit, we can do that. But like I said, um, some of this armor scheme is a little is a little crazy, actually. So let's see about seven inches on the forward end, okay? And then the aft deck, actually, we can beef back up. Uh, in the forward deck, we might be able to get away with an inch and a half on the forward deck. We got a 0.4 offset. Um, if we go with that, it's an a, it's an aft offset of one tenth, um, which actually really is fine. And there you have it. Weighing in at less than our previous build, but it's because the turrets, are, the, the the weighting has been recentered. Um, you know, the, the, the balancing has been recentered and everything else. Uh, what do we want? <coughs> Excuse me. 11.3 inches on the penetration, which is really actually quite good. Um, right there again. Is it is it enough damage? Because our damage is only 580 on the AP shells. <coughs> Will that work for the Koenig, the Koenig class? I think so. Um, you got all the guns mounted center line, which is where things had started to move by this period. Uh, and of course, we could do builds, uh, alternative builds where the, the superstructure is all together. And you know, honestly, you could probably get away with mounting another, um, another turret forward and another turret back here, uh, possibly over top of I mean, you've got standard barbette, right? You've got a standard barbette, uh, which is, that's actually a little bit taller. But then you have a tall barbette, and then you have a very tall um, barbette, which could theoretically push, uh, actually, the very the very tall superimposed um, guy might be really nice, too. So, I don't know. We'll have to, have to see. Have to see about all of that. But this is a uh, an effective build on the, uh, the, 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 the German historical Koenigs, all right? And let's try to get a, uh, a, good, um, a good shot of that after we've built it. Okay, all right. So that takes care of the Koenigs, um, I think. Uh, and there again, you know, with refits, you can do all kinds of stuff with this. You can put, uh, and, and I've done this before, I've put a cluster of like eight, eight inch secondaries uh, around in here before just to, you know, um, just to do things. Uh, you can do stuff like that. You can put a couple of, uh, a couple of those barbettes. These kind of barbettes, you put, you put like a, a, a pair of these back and forth and then you can stick you know, wings on the either side, and there you go, you got it. Uh, there's there's a lot of crazy things you can do with that, but this is a historical build, so I'm trying to adhere more towards the uh, the philosophy of the time, all right? Whether the shells were light or not, I don't exactly recall. Um, you know, we could we could go to normal size shells, we could go to heavy size uh, heavy size shells. Um, speaking of which. No, I still li I still prefer those nose views, um, and, and there again, you know, do you do you, do you want to go to semi ballistics? Okay, but what do you need to do to those semi ballistics? Well, you would need to make them heavy. You would need to have ballistite with them, and you get uh, ten point one penetration at that range, and that's that's about as much as you're getting on the uh, the semi ballistic shells right now. So let's go back to the light standard with the cordite. Um, the cordite actually gives you range, so hang on just a second. Well, and it also reduces the penetration. But let's see here. That's 11.3. What happens if we go ballistite and like TNT? It's 11.9, so it's even more. Uh, with picric acid, um, it drops to 9.6. So really, the, the, the dunite um, and the ballistite only is adding an extra 5%. So that's really weird. Um, that's really weird. 13. 
eleven nine. What happens if I put Fordite with the with the with the TNT at fifteen? You're getting eleven three, which doesn't make sense because the TNT does not improve penetration. No, it's twelve five. Okay. Well, if we go ballistite with TNT, what's the damage? The damage parameters of that five hundred and forty-one eight ninety-eight. Um, five eighty. See, it's five hundred eighty. Um, 12.5 even might be a little bit much on the penetration. Let me drop semi ballistic 15,000, 8.7, um, 9.1. See, this is this is where this is where this can get really really tricky. Um, go to semi ballistic, ballistite standard size shells. Nine and a half heavy shells. Uh, ten one. I'm not gonna work. Let's stick. Let's stick with this build for now. We'll use the cordite. Uh, it's nine point eight on the reload, which is as good as it's gonna get. Uh, anti torp number one. And again, all of this can be can be modified later. Uh, like I don't know when we go to uh, when we go to um, geared turbines. That's gonna drop off quite a bit of weight. We can actually improve to anti torp two. Or something along those lines. Krupp three armor. When that comes out, you'll also be able to. And, and you know, we could also drop off a little bit of the fuel range. But um, I, I'd like to keep the operational range out right now because we're starting to get further and further uh, uh, spread out. Um, so as that happens, yes, you do want to consider. Um, you do want to consider such things, right? We, you know, we also do we really need the auxiliary diesel engine here? Well, yeah, it helps with the turret traverse speed and repairs and other things. So, you know, the, the, the auxiliary engines actually are really good. Um, do we need the advanced propeller shaft? Not really. Actually, we could drop that off, and that's adding to 1% uh, to hull weight, 3% to engine weight, and then engine cost per weight, actually. So we could drop that. We could revise the armor scheme a little bit. But, you know, honestly, your forward armor doesn't need to be as heavy because if you look at it, it's actually designed, if you're approaching enemy ships, it's designed to cause ricochets. The forward armor doesn't have to be even. You know, your armor scheme doesn't have to be even. So, anyway, uh, this is actually going to be more towards the historically accurate weight of the ship. Um, though... There again, uh, that other that other build that that uh, uh, the Kaisers the Kaisers are really that's a really difficult that's a tricky thing to have the echelon um, for the for the wing turrets as opposed to just right across from each other. If they were if they were side by side, it'd make things easier, um, but they're not. So interesting enough, all of our guns are on maxed out length. Um. Can I go with 14 on the turrets? No, we're about 45, uh, 45 ton overweight. Now, if I drop the top armor on this down to say two and a half, well, then we could do that. We could get that extra inch on the sides for a little less protection on the top of the armor. Either that, or we go back to three here, and we say, okay, well, what about a 13 inch barbet? Okay, that's that's probably more fair. Although I don't like to under armor the barbettes, if anything, I like to over armor them just to sort of contain any potential fires down in the magazine. All right, so anyway, that's that. That's going to be that. That's the Koenig. Okay. And we can go ahead and lay down all of those, maybe, though. Let's see here. Um,. Yeah, actually, we probably could. Um, well, no, it's 30,000 tons. We'd only re really, really be able to build one of them right now. Um, 
once this ship is done, and, and you know, I hate to do that to them. I may as well lay down all of them. I may as well put all of them up. Um, there were four dreadnoughts, four of these. There were four of these. So there was the Koenig. So let's go ahead and put all of them up. There was the Koenig. There was the uh, Grosser Kurfürst, which was the second ship. So Grosser Kurfürst. There was the Mark Graf. And there was the Kron Prince. Uh, let me see here, Koenig. Um, where was she built? Wilhelmshaven. And again, you know, this is just stuff that you can do. It's really, it's really kind of neat, neat understanding the history of all this. Uh, the second was the Grosser Kurfürst, which was laid down and launched where? Hamburg. Uh, the Mark Graf was built in Bremen. And you know it's funny. It's it's funny. Well, it's it's interesting anyway to to note that uh, you know some of these were built in different shipyards in the same city, uh, and this guy was built in Germania Werft in Kiel, the Kron Prince Wilhelm. All right. So there's all of our Koenigs. We're going to suspend, suspend, and suspend. There we go. Bring everybody back to 18 months. All right. So, and we're just going to put these on a rotation. We'll just, we'll just put them on rotation. He's got eight months. He's got three months. So, you know, as time progresses also, we're, we're going to open up more of these slots. So we'll be able to do two at a time and then three at a time. And I don't know, um, four, yeah, something like that, right? So, meanwhile, we're we're finishing up some of these other ships for our, for our allies. Let me see here. Uh. 2,000 tons to, yeah, no, that's not going to happen. All right, so uh, I think that's going to be about it for today. Yes, that's going to have to be. All right, so, um, well, actually, yeah, it's going to have to be clipped. So anyway, um, thanks for stopping by, as always, folks. It's, uh, your, your patronage is much appreciated. Uh, your support is even more appreciated. So, you know, if you're enjoying the content, please be sure to drop a like, a subscribe, a follow. Uh, it does help the channel to grow. It appeases those algorithm gods. So pray, 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 please. Anyway, uh, till next time, this is Wolf190D signing off.